Hello, everybody. Hopefully your mass housing crisis is going all right. Mine's not going too bad. I'm settling into the whole like working from home. So today I am sporting a nice little Gucci uh, Louis Vuitton collaborated storm trooper Snuggie that I have on today. If you would like to give me one, donate to my Patreon in the link below. If this is YouTube, if this is TV, well, sorry, you can go on the YouTube and go to the link. And, yeah, okay, got it. Today's story is Kamala Harris completely changed her Wikipedia page. Now, granted, it was by one person. We technically don't know who it is, but this happens to like different candidates I'm going to break down. But the stuff that they're changing is so egregious. Like, for example, her her work with Steve Mnuchin in Israel. And it's like, what the hell? Oh, my God. It's, it's bad. So just bear with me. So the story was originally leaked by somebody from The Intercept. Her name is, I'm going to butcher her name, so I apologize. No disrespect. Her name is AIDA, Ada, Ida Chavez. Thank you for giving me some of the information. And I'm also presenting some of the other information that I had found as well. But okay, here we go. There is 408 edits. The other candidates that this has happened to include Tim Kaine, who had just an untold amount before she, he was accepted as VP. Sarah Palin had 65 edits, Stacey Abrams 66, and Warren had 22. Now, the, a couple of the big like little snippets that I wanted to get into was, number one, Steve Mnuchin. Sorry, I have to like mentally prepare myself because I'm like, oh, God. Like, this is so not surprising. But then how do we end up with this person as the potential VP pick? So anyway, Kamala Harris refused to prosecute Steve Mnuchin for mortgage fraud related crimes. So essentially, al alleged, allegedly, in 2013, Kamala's staff attorneys recommended prosecution of Steve Mnuchin's One West Bank. Now, she claims that she didn't see any evidence and facts correlating him towards a crime, and so she decided not to prosecute him, even though he's literally the poster child of corruption. But, interestingly enough, three years later, in 2016, when she was running for the Senate, Steve Mnuchin decided to uh, donate $2,000 to one single senator. It uh, <clears throat> happens to be her. What a weird coincidence that is, isn't it? Now you could say, well, <clears throat> Zach, well, it doesn't make a difference because she did not accept him as the Secretary of Treasury. <laughs> so I need to take a coffee sponsor. Somebody hit me up. Anyway, yeah, because she's self-serving, okay? She supported Steve Mnuchin because it was beneficial to, towards her. It's not beneficial towards her public image right now, so she didn't support him. Now, granted, her saying that, like, no, I don't support this didn't mean anything. It didn't do anything. But anyway, thought you guys would appreciate that point. Another tidbit. 2017, Kamala traveled to Israel and the West Bank and spoke with Netanyahu, but that was deleted. And you have to wonder, like, why was that deleted? Why would something like that be deleted? I mean, I don't know. Maybe she's trying to, you know, conduct peace. If that was a peaceful event... Why would you delete such a thing? Well, what happened in 2017? Trump decided to order Jerusalem as the new capital of Israel. Kamala traveled between Israel and the West Bank. Jerusalem is located between Israel and the West Bank. If she deleted that, do you think that she was in support of a peace deal and not having Jerusalem as the capital? What do you think? No. Of course not. So that's ridiculous. Next, Kamala violated rules of set by the Ethics Commission for Campaign Finance Spending. All right, it's pretty bad. And then there's this little funny blurb that I found where she said it's not progressive to be soft on crime. It's my little cringe face. I'm like, mm, mm, yeah, okay. So the context of the situation was that she was running against a somebody who was running the district of attorney's office, and this person didn't prosecute anti-war protesters who destroyed property. She thinks that they should have prosecuted these individuals. So that's what she said. It's not progressive to be soft on crime. So given the context of what's going on today, and some of you guys who are watching this, and some of the things that you guys might be doing during the protests, what do you think she's going to do to you? Yeah, exactly. So anyway, it looks like Kamala is going to be the next chosen one because the Democratic elites are completely out of touch and have no understanding about what we actually want. So my guess with this is that they're probably going to threaten us with Trump and be like, you have to vote or else you're going to get Trump. 
That's it. It's either it's either Kamala and Biden, or it's going to be Trump and Pence. Which one do you want? Blah, 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 blah. Which, I mean, granted, they're probably right, but this is just another slap to the face is my point. Now, you have to wonder, after six weeks of justice reform protests, how out of touch do you have to be to think that the poster child of a corrupt criminal justice system would be the best idea for a VP pick? No, Kamala, we do not want you as the VP. We literally want the, the opposite of you. Thank you.